This is the award-winning Lee Pitts Live. This portion of Lee Pitts Live is brought to you by Hodges University, celebrating 25 years of educating Southwest Florida. Welcome back, Southwest Florida. Glad you stayed with us. And you're going to be delighted that you did, too. I mean, you're going to be thrilled, especially when you start to see these pictures. We have a celebrity in his own right, renowned artist Audible Oliver Phelps is here. So without further ado, let's welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to now be here. Artist. Now, uh, the rumor has it, and what I see on Facebook, that you're a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. Yes, the Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> Crimson and cream. Yeah, man, no you wrong. Kappas are just showing up on my TV show like, uh, like you know, you guys are at home, man. You take, the Kappas are taking over Lee well, Pitt's life. We want you to do good, you know. We want it to look good, so. <laughs> okay, so folk out there, you got to know that the Kappa, remember Kappa Alpha Psi is making our show look good for all of you who are seeing it all over the internet. And, on television. Uh, we're proud of what the, the work that KSI has done in the community. Of course, I'm a member of the fabulous Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, the Blue and White Brigade. But uh, we can work closer with you. You went to FAMU? Yes, sir. Yeah, you shout FAMU out, man. The Marching 100, you were part right. of that? I bleed orange and green. So you're really an artsy guy, man. You play an instrument, you put pen to canvas, and you paint, and you're an educator, you work with youth. I mean, you really made your contribution to society. How do you feel about that? I enjoy what I do. God has given me that uh, gift, and I just use it to my utmost. And uh, um, the, how did you first get into the whole aspect of uh, doing art? Uh, in, even in my office at school, I have a, a kindergarten report card, and the teacher says he's very artistic. So I've been drawing all my life. When I got to high school, I had an art teacher that told me, you have to have your own style for people to get to know you. So don't copy, mm. have your own style. So I was working on that, working on that. And now I have a style that when people see my work, they'll say, oh, that's Ollie's, yeah, that's Ollie's. Really? Because I have a unique style to it. Some people thought I was doing it on a computer, but it's all hand. Now, when uh, and we're looking at some, some, some paintings now, is that the best way to describe it, paintings or drawings? Uh, pen and ink, and sometimes I use watercolor with it. Okay. Uh, and, you're, and, and as we can see there, your, your, your art looks so real. Now, right. when you say you got your own style, if you're working from, say, a photo, a portrait, like I'm going to give you a photo, you're going to do a portrait for me. If you're working from a photo and you do a portrait, how can you have your own style when you got to stay true to the portrait? Well, when I say my style, it's just the way I draw it in. Uh, I do lines, okay. and with those lines, I can make that 2D look 3D. The closer together is darker, further apart makes lighter. And so, and I haven't seen that. I've seen a lot of cross hatching and a lot of other, you know, pinning with dots, mm -hmm. but never my, my style. And I've, I, I just tried to work it, work it, work it till I perfected it. Now, it's just natural. Okay, you take a lot of pride in that then. Oh, well, yes, I do. Now, the... Are you one of those guys that's just like, hey, one day you just start drawing and came natural? Or did you go out and get some more formal training to enhance your, 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 your skill? I thought I had the ability not to get further training. You thought and you knew it I all. I thought I knew it all. Mm -hmm. And uh, until I got to high school, my dad, he was an administrator. And he came out to the school because he found out I didn't enroll in art. So I had some, some easy class. And he said, oh, no. So he came out to the school and changed my whole itinerary which I had to go into drawing. And I was upset, but I didn't let him know. <laughs> you know how that is. But right now you give him all the praise did, for that. Yes, because I got in that classroom and the art teacher brought out a piece of her work. She said, when you graduate, I hope you can outdraw me. And I saw that picture and it blew me away. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, I thought I was good, but I'm nothing. And I was, that was my goal, to be better than her. Man, I want to pay homage to Mr. Phelps, man, yes, because, so. because uh, what you became as a result of that taking your natural skill, blending it with some formal, some formal training, and now we get what we get today, one of the great renowned artists in our community. Uh, the, when you say you have your own style, how did you develop that? Uh, trial and error. Mm -hmm. um, I, I saw um, a picture, I can't remember who the artist was, but he did a lot of cross action, which is you take pen and ink, but you do different layers, different um, angles to make it dark. Mm -hmm. And... I thought, I said, well, let me try it. And I just, it was like trial and error. When it actually happened, I don't know. But when I did it, I was like, oh, I like this. And the more 
I've done. I got to look at some of my pictures I, I drew 10 years ago. I look at it now and say, oh, man, I, I kill it now. Uh -huh. You know, so each time I get better and better. And that's why I, I like to look for a challenge. I look for facial expressions. I love to see facial expressions or someone sweating. Um, just to see if I could get so that you look at it, you can tell that person was sweating, but it's all pen and ink line drawing, and it's 3D. I mean, look, it's coming off the page. And when you say pen and ink, is that the best way to describe your medium or your technique? Yes, yeah, pen and ink. I start with a pencil, I sketch it, and then I just uh, pen and ink and outline it, and then I start putting in all the details with my pen and ink. Now, if somebody wanted to commission you to draw a portrait of them, is it best to work from a photo or do they actually come in and pose with their family or their dog? No. How, how, how does that work? I like that, a photo. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a different artist. I don't use the easel. I lay down. Mm -hmm. I like to watch TV, watch my sports, and draw. Laying down. And laying down, I draw. And my son, Orion, who's younger, he was little, he, was little, he used to lay down beside me. And draw. Now he still does it. He's in eighth grade. He still would come down, lay down beside me, and he'll try to draw too. Fascinating. Now, uh, what has been the response from people who have gotten you to do art for them when they see the final product? I mean, because really, when we turn it over, when I turn my picture over to you, I don't know what's going to come back. Have you pretty much been getting rave reviews every time? To God be the glory. Yes. <laughs> my 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 best critic is my wife mm -hmm. and my daughter. I always, I finish a portrait, I take it to them, I say, okay, now I give them the picture. I say, look at this picture. And then I hold up the portrait, and they'll look at it and go, that's it. Oh my gosh, that's it. Or, hmm, uh, so I'll take it back, go back in my, go back on that flow, work it on. Now, do you, do you feel um, like, is it an ego thing or anything if somebody says to you, well, I don't really like the nose on this. Can you change this nose a little bit or, did that, or change the eyes? Is that? No, I never get upset with that because I want you to be happy. Okay. Because I want you to hang it up. I don't want you to be like, oh, thank you, and then put it in the closet. You know, so and I so want you, you to be happy. So you can go back and make adjustments like oh, that? yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, that's really interesting. Now, um, how, how do you find time to do the art? I know you're an educator and you do a whole lot of other things with children. How do you find time to put into that? So I can know that you put in the proper time to my piece. <laughs> uh, if you know, that, especially during the fall, mm -hmm. I can knock out a lot of people because that's football season. I'm at home Saturday. I ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I work all day Saturday. After church Sunday, you have that dinner, I lay down and draw. Mm -hmm. Sometimes on the week, during the week is a little tough, you know, because of work and church. But my weekends, I can knock things out. And then the other days, it's like, you know, I'm cleaning it up. Uh -huh. Do you see like you being an artist as like a part-time job where you can make a little money on the side or you see this as this is just as important as any other things that you do? I don't look at it as like a part-time job. I look, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's okay. fun. And it's a blessing because a lot of things I've done was free. You know, if I know you're really into, let's say like your, your segment and you, you had a picture of uh, your, your founders and I see that you really like that picture but it's so small, I would go back and make a nice picture for you and present it because it's, it's like it's fun I like to see the joy of work to people mm -hmm. I got the perfect picture in mind that I'm gonna have you do for me what advice do you give young people who want to pursue a career in art one thing is definitely uh, know your craft but also don't like when I graduated from high school I had offers from every art institute you can imagine because I sent my son they saw me at different shows but my dad said no you're going to university um, what university you go to? Be going to university. And I was blessed to go to Florida a and University, where you get that background. Mm -hmm. So you get the actual art background. Take some business courses, so you know how to handle your money. Then you go to an uh, art institute and learn the actual craft. But you need a, a well background of knowledge to do that. Because I've seen a lot of cats that you know they'll go to the art institute. And then when it doesn't pan out, they have nothing to fall back on. I see. So, see, I got everything to fall back on. If I, my art didn't work, I, you know, I'm still employed with the Collier County School System. I'm working with the church. You know, I can do other things. You're not a starving artist. Right. I'm not a starving artist, which but I thought I wanted to be famous. My dad said, you don't get famous until you die. Right. But people <laughs> can see you all around at different um, arts festivals and things like that. And we have a phone number on the screen. People can reach you at that number and start that discussion on getting you to do some work for them, right? Right. It's not just portraits. I mean, I do, you know, I've drawn people house. I've drawn people cars. I've, uh, 
especially sports. I love sports. I so, you know, if you say, boy, my, you could be talking to me and say, Paul, I love Dan Marino. I'll go draw it for you, you know, <laughs> and, and give it to you. I mean, that's just, I, that's my passion. I just like to see people happy. That's, that's yeah. lovely, man. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, and uh, we're looking forward to getting you back here. And we're so blessed to have you living in the Naples community, even though you known all around the country as for the great work you do. Keep up the good work, okay? All right, thank you. It's a pleasure being here. And I'm going to unveil on the show the picture that you do for me. All right. All right. As the saying goes on this particular show, for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like Oliver Phelps, this renowned artist who are doing it. When we come back, the Nation of Islam right here on Leap is Live.